Uh, welcome back to the channel guys. Um, today I've got a few things to do. We're going to be hopefully getting the plugs in, giving them all change, topping up the coolant and maybe seeing if it fires up. We'll see how far we get. So um, that's the plan. So let's crack on. And sit down. Awesome, so thank you very much for finding the channel. If you haven't been here before, please do consider hitting that like and subscribe button if you like what you see. Um, first thing we've got to do is um, take a few things apart in the engine bay because I put it all together to make sure everything fit. And I've got to take a few things apart. Um, I've got to um, take the engine cover off and um, take the air filters out and replace all that stuff. So let's make a start on that, shall we? Before I get too far, I think, because I've got to take all this off anyway, I'm going to clearance a little bit on here because that's just too tight for my liking. That's going to chafe and then destroy the O2 connection it's just the way it is if it was more upright it would come up and clear it but I'm gonna I'm gonna clearance that by bending it a bit somehow oh happy days um right so we'll start with some easy stuff she'll do the air filters So this is the new air filter, and this is the old air filter, and you can see there's difficult to see light through, but just look at the colour difference, it's just filthy, good idea, and this is actually perished a bit as well, so that can go in the bin. I'm going to try and get this back in without making a fidzy of it. You know what? I'm gonna take it all out and do it. Do it that way. So that's both my air filters done, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave them out of the way because it's going to be easier for me to get access to all the plugs and stuff that I need to plug in. So I'm going to leave that as they are. Leave that as they are, is that even English? Leave those as they are. Try and get that to slide back in. There we go. Um, yeah, so I need to, I've ordered some replacement stuff for this as well. I'm going to that looks like that rubber's probably burst, doesn't it? So I'm going to... It helps if the camera's pointing. So it looks like this is leaking. So I know there's a replacement hose in the pack for this and I've ordered some um, additional shields. So I'm going to take this off, pop that. But I've got to take DMEs out of the way, which means I've got to take the brace off. Um, and I've got to take the power steering fluid out of the way. Uh, which looks like it's low on fluid as well, which is cool. Um, but then that'll be able to get down to the two um, plugs that are on the, the back of the bank. And with the DME out of the way, I'll have this reservoir out of the way as well. So I'll be able to get to the two banks that are down here. Um, I think I've just got to unbolt stuff and pull it forward. So I'm going to leave all this stuff out until I've got the plugs in. Um, one of the things I need to do is get the plugs. So um, I ordered a whole new set of plugs and I think the, the gap is supposed to be 0.8mm. So should we do that? Alright, so there's plug number one. So I'll just check these. These are adapter 80. You need a, because um, they're different plug splines, so they've got the um, it's not like a hex spline, you can see that it's got like a thing, so you need to get the tool with the right thing, and this is magnetic, so once you put your plug in, once you put your plug in, it's got like a little magnetic seat, so when you put it upside down like that, the plug won't fall out, and it's a nice long reach, so you can actually get down to the wall, and a nice seat for it. Be 
coming in. Don't do it too tight, just give it enough to make sure it seats. And that is spark plug number one. So then I can get coil pack number one. So the important thing on this is it's difficult to see with all this stuff. There's a little can you see that there? There's a little like a um, shape, and that corresponds with the shape on here. So you need to, when you get the coil packed down, you need to make sure that that lines up, otherwise it will sit proud. And then it just pops in, and then you get your plug, which should just slide on, and then you close it down. So that is one done, seven to go. Now the other seven are going to be difficult because I've got to get, I've got to get this out of the way, DME's out of the way, bank. That one over there should be easier as well, but I've got to get all this stuff out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that. So I've managed to get uh, one, two, and four in, and now I'm just trying to work out how I can do this. If I just leverage this, I think I might need to unplug the DME to do this one, or just maybe some of these connectors, maybe not all of them. That might be the option. So if I just unplug the back ones, I think there's enough room now to slide in. It's, it's down there. Get the torch on. I think I can now get to that without having to take everything apart. So let's do that. Right, now that is all four plugs in so if I plug this stuff back in on the DME slide that down that's this bank done um, but I think I'm gonna still take this off to do something with that but in the meantime Let's go to the other side. So front two in, I've just got the back two to do, which again, need to move this DME out of the way. 
Oh, let's see how this goes, shall we? Really nice, satisfying when it goes on. Down to about taking the DNA all the way out of the way. Makes life so much easier. Yeah, moving the DNA is definitely a good idea. So the final coil, keep that out of the way. I see oil around there. Quite a lot of oil. It's just going to smooth like a bitch when it starts. Okay, so that's plugs in, but it's getting a bit dark now. So all the plugs are in DME, so I've, I've clearanced this a little bit, so that's not gonna cause a problem. Everything's back, so I've got to put the air filters back on, um, connect up the MAF, so I've got some MAF sensors to throw in there as well. <laughs> connect up the MAF, <clears throat> and then I'm gonna have a look at this thing, because this is uh, horrible. That's clearly had some leakage. The others look okay. But this one needs to be changed and I've got some additional sleeving coming as well that will help tidy things up so let's get the air boxes back on connect the MAFs I might put that engine cover on as well actually so I have a MAF sensor um, got them pretty cheap actually because I think these are the same as the minis um, it seems like a, a standard part so I believe it only goes one way yeah I don't think it will fit the other way around no, the holes don't work out, so then you end up with the with the air rushing over this thing that tells it the airflow. So that will go in there like that. And then I've got some small screws. <coughs> I also ordered. All right, guys. So it's the next day now. Um, it got way too late, and it got a bit cold and dark, and I ended up sacrificing the six mil socket to the engine gods. Um, so I need to try and find that in the engine bay. So I don't know, I mean I presume these are just poppers. Got to go one way, once they're on they're done. Clean, is it? Oil. There you go, so I replaced this. Should have given it a clean, maybe. I don't know what's going on there. It was the old one was covered in oil and everything, so so that's done. So I can put these back, put the engine cover back on. And then we can dive under the car and see if we can retrieve my socket. Okay, so you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these, which are 16 mil, and you've got a few 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
it's easy to 8 mil just holding the, uh, the tray to the other panels. And I've left one bolt in so it doesn't fall on me. But I've never done an oil change on a BMW before, so this will be a new experience. So there's the drain plug, which looks rather oily. There seems to be a lot of oil all over this car. I wonder what sort of problem they had. one of these then it's just a big one and then this whole tray will come down on top of me <laughs> So that means my socket didn't fall all the way through, which is not good news. It's all caked in oil. But this all looks good. Can't complain about that. Okay, so I'm assuming that is one of the exhaust. Okay, get this tray out, and then we can have a look at. I need one of these ratchet straps, don't I? So there's your drain plug. That's your oil filter. You get your bell housing exhaust. That's all cool. Okay, that does beg the question: Where the hell did my thing go? Where's my socket? And this oil. Let's get a rag down here and give it a tidy up. Okay. Yay! I found my missing socket. Thank you. Did you help? Alright, moment of truth. sample and crush washer still on there it's still dripping so I think I'm gonna let it drip and get as much of that out as possible before I put new oil in and the other problem I've got is I can't find my oil filter tool so short of trying to get it off by hand which I might try and do um, but I don't think there's much chance of that happening Um, I think I'm a bit stuck on that one. So anyway, I've got my new crush washer on, so it's always important to... Oh, can't even see, is it focusing? No, there you go. 
So I've got a new crash washer ready to go. So that will go on as soon as um, the oil is stopped dripping. Oop. Up here, this is your oil filter housing. It's all dripping around, isn't it? And there's a tool that you put over and you turn it and it releases this. Ooh. So I don't think there's any chance of me getting this off by hand. I think that is way too tight. Okay, I think that's enough. So what we'll do, got a new crush washer on there. and you literally just give it a and it should be it okay we can't um, finish the oil change but we can top up coolant so this is the auxiliary so you can see this is almost burn dry so I need to cover that bottom plate but not cover where it says Max, so I've got some cool in here, and I'm gonna be throwing that in. All right, so I've also just pushed some oil through a filter just to check, see if there's any material in the oil, and it's clean. So there is good because that means there is no sign of any rod failure or bearing failure or anything like that <clears throat> so that's good positives okay so that's as far as I can get today guys I need a tool to get the um, oil filter off and I need to get the engine started <clears throat> to check the cooling levels so I've topped off the um, the coolant for the auxiliary pump and for the um, for the main coolant for the engine um, I think we're all ready to go I just need to get the oil in the engine which I can't do until I change the filter so, and I can't change that until the new tool turns up, so that's likely to be a couple of days. So I'm going to call it a day there, um, which is a shame, because I um, made some good progress on this. Um. Alright, welcome back guys. It's actually a couple of days later. Um, we've had horrible rain, it's been freezing. It's actually Christmas Eve now, so Merry Christmas if you're watching this after Christmas. Um, and um, of course you will be, because I'm not going to actually post this till after Christmas. So, um, it's bloody freezing, it's about 3 degrees, and we had horrible floods and everything here yesterday, but um, I've got all the bits I need to do. Got my oil filter ready and I've got my oil ready to go. I've got my CHF 11S um, to top up the power steering um, and I've got the tool to uh, remove the oil filter housing. So um, let's crack on with that and then let's try and start the car. How exciting. Is this the right size? Alright, so we have this special tool. Christ, that was tight. Oh, you son of a bitch. Okay, this was really over tight the last time, but... Mark. 
What is wrong with this thing? Why does it do that? Anybody? Does anybody else have this problem or what? This all looks wet. Does this just drill a hole in this or something? So why is it not draining from the holes? I need to drill a hole in here. Because this just looks wet. got 10 litres of uh, Thermologen liquid molly, it's supposed to be really good stuff for these cars, and it's green. Um, and this car takes 9.5 litres, so it should be all of this, and then some. Put a few litres in and then I'm going to check to make sure it's not dripping out underneath. Which it should be. So I've got about just a litre, you see the mark moving, that's not that's a litre left, so that's nine. So that's the all done, let's check our... Sorry. A bit high, hopefully, that'll purge. Actually, I might leave those caps loose and on this side. Can't see the torch. Where's my torch? Can't really see, but I think. I think the coolant's down there. Yeah, you can see the coolant down there, so that just needs to cycle and do whatever it does as well. So, because I'm not going to start the car, I just want to. I want the um, water pumps to run to purge everything, so I want to leave these loose. So, this is power steering. And off the bottom so this um, power steering needs um, CHF 11S only which used to be a Pentisone but I think it's made by Fuchs now so yeah for me Pentisone um, so I'm gonna drop some of this in if I can open it now, this stuff is evil so always make sure you're wearing gloves when you're doing this stuff and we're going to need that much. We can probably do a whole flush with a litre. So, um, I'm not sure. I think that might be it. Let's get a clean cloth. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is going to jump back in the car, clear all the errors because there'll be loads of errors from where things got unplugged and everything. Still not got the bumper on, so that's going to complain about that. Clear all the errors. Um, I'm going to leave the fuel pump unplugged, so it's not going to try and fire. I'm just going to crank it um, and build oil pressure for a bit. Um, it's going to complain 
say it's not going to run. <coughs> Clear all the arrows again, connect the fuel pump, give it a fish. Fingers crossed. All right, let's go and get the laptop. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to log on through ISTA. Clear down all the errors because there's a bucket load of errors that have popped up. <clears throat> Don't know why I'm getting more errors. I'm assuming it's because things have been connected and disconnected. So we'll get ISTA connected up. I'll do some screen recording on this, I guess. And um, clear the errors. Uh, and then we'll try and prime the engine. Cool. Right, can't get my screen recording to work, so software. Let's do a vehicle test. <laughs> Loads of errors. What the hell's going on? I had them all cleared. Oh, got DME down. DME one. Oh, let's clear it. Okay, so I'm going to have to do some more digging under the bonnet. So, that there, DME1, says it's not responding. And I did unplug them to um, get everything back in. So I'm wondering if something's been disturbed, but um, all these other errors, God knows what's going on. Shouldn't be having all this crap. I'm wondering if they're related to DME. He shouldn't. Cass, FRM. Five. So remember, I was down to like 12. So I've got one ECU not responding and something with errors. <clears throat> That's not very clever, is it? It's got worse. Thought I was doing right now. I'm going to let this um, go back through, have a look, and then check out the ME1, see if I can work out what's going on. Um, but I might have to call it a day in a minute. It is Christmas Eve, so I might be back out here on Boxing Day. But that's a concern. Okay, so we're making progress. So these are the errors I've got. So pedestrian protection system is because I think I've got the bonnet open and stuff. The fuel reserve because of low fuel and initialized time monitor is because I've got to initialize the time monitor. We need to be driving for that. And when I look on the on ISTA, so missing status electric fuel pump, missing receiver DME transmitter. So that's because I've got the fuse pulled. Side camera, side camera, side camera, side camera. Not connected, not learned. That's because I've got the bumper off. Pedestrian protection sensor, front sensor. That's because the bonnet's open. AC compressor, deactivation due to under pressure and free. So I've got an AC problem. Apart from that, I've got no other errors on the dash. And when I look at the tree, if I look at, um, where is it? Vehicle. So that's looking much better. So the error on here is because of the fuel pump. This one is the um, all round vision. That's going to be the AC. And this one is the crash safety module, which I think is because I've got the front bumper disconnected. So, what I might do is connect the front bumper actually. Or actually, <coughs> fuel pump's off. Should we give it a crank? Give it a crank and see what happens.
this, so that's popped up now because I put the fuse back in. Six errors. <laughs> sorry, camera, sorry, camera, sorry, camera, sorry, camera. So that's four open protection circuits because the bonnet's open, I think. AC, you can press that. So I think the only thing I've got is a discharged AC, but there was no knock or anything from that engine that I could hear. So I think I'm good to go. <laughs> oh man, check that out. Um, that's awesome. So that fires up now, which is bloody incredible. Um, I've still got to get the exhaust on. I've still got to get the bonnet on, or the bonnet. Still got to get the bumper on. And um, then it should just be cosmetic. Oh no, sorry, one more thing I've got is, hold on, let me do this. So my sat nav is about 100 miles off. So I think there's an aerial disconnected somewhere. So I'll get that sorted. But if I go back to the um, menu and go to the vehicle information, Vehicle status, check control. It's all gone, car starts, it's awesome. Um, and I was also able to get it into gear, um, which was cool. I didn't try the fluffy pedal, but that's all cool. Um, so that's good. So I've obviously got some com cosmetic stuff to do. Sort out the sat nav. Get the bonnet on, get the exhaust on. And then we're good, we're done. That's bloody incredible. Um, if you've got any ideas on why my sat nav is a million miles off, please let me know. Um, I think it's probably there's a disconnected connection on the CV, so I'm going to have to rip all this stuff out and have a look under there, but um, that's bloody incredible. I'm so happy. I am so happy you can't believe. So there was no sound of any knocking or anything like that when it started. It was just loud as um, anything because it was just open straight from the headers down to underneath the car so I just need to make sure everything's buttoned up make sure I've got everything nice and tight um, it all looks good so far I'll make sure the coolant is uh, bled through so that's not going to be gurgling away so I'll keep checking through that stuff and um, yeah happy days Merry Christmas everybody um, so I think that's going to be it for today um, it's been quite a journey to get here actually it's been over quite a number of weeks because of Christmas and um, covid and now we're in tier four and all that sort of crap as well so um anyway the um yeah that's gonna be it so um next time around i'm gonna be getting the exhaust on i'm gonna get the bumper back on um, and we'll see what the car sounds like when it's all um properly closed up um and then i'm gonna move on to the cosmetic stuff so i'll probably be ripping the dash out but we'll see anyway thank you very much for watching if you like what you see here please do hit that like and subscribe button that helped me out immensely um, otherwise, I'll see you on the driveway next time. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Merry Christmas, guys. Happy New Year.